When studying history, we constantly encounter people and cultures who acted and thought in ways that are very different from our own. It is often the case that we automatically judge those from the past quite harshly because they're not exactly like us. When we are quick to judge history based upon our own beliefs, it says more about us than it does about the people of the past. To overcome this, we use a skill known as historical empathy. Developing historical empathy is perhaps the most difficult, but one of the most important, skills that you will learn as a student of history. Historical empathy is the ability to demonstrate a genuine understanding about why people thought and acted in the past based upon their historical context, instead of judging them by the moral and social standards of our own day. For example, when we are studying the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party in the 1920s and 1930s, it is easy for us to be extremely critical of the people of Germany who made a conscious decision to vote for Hitler. We judge them harshly because we know what Hitler became after he gained power. However, historical empathy helps us to appreciate that the Germans at the time didn't know what we do, and they thought that they had good reasons for voting in favour of Hitler. For example, they genuinely believed that the Nazi party could solve the economic hardships that Germany had been suffering under. Once we learn this, we are able to explore these reasons in more detail, rather than just dismissing the German people as idiotic or evil. At this stage, it is important to stress the difference between empathy and sympathy. Empathy is appreciating why things occurred, while sympathy is placing yourself in another's shoes and agreeing with them. In history, we want to appreciate their motives, but not necessarily agree with them. That is why we call this historical empathy rather than historical sympathy. We want to gain an appreciation of their actions, rather than endorsing them for what they did. So how do we develop historical empathy? In order to develop the skill of historical empathy, we need to do two things. Firstly, be aware of our own inherent bias. When we learn about people's motivations, we naturally make decisions about whether we personally like what they did. This is because, as human beings, we have our own personal opinions about lots of things. However, since we naturally think like people from our own day and age, we can too quickly judge and condemn people who are not like us. Remember that the world and culture which you're used to is also unique. We believe certain thoughts and actions are either right or wrong based upon our own context and position in history. It is helpful to realise that people in the future will look back on us and judge us unfairly based upon their own unique beliefs, without taking the time to understand why we think and act the way we do. The second thing you need to develop historical empathy is to take the time to listen to the thoughts and beliefs of the people from the time. To do this, it is worth finding primary sources from the period and reading how they justified their own actions. Remember, when we do this, we only want to gain an appreciation of their own worldview rather than endorsing what they had to say. So once you've taken the time to develop historical empathy, it is important to show it in your own writing. When completing an assessment task in history, it is important to remain neutral when describing the people of the past. To show historical empathy in an analytical essay, it is most important to avoid the use of adjectives that demonstrate your own subjective judgement. For example, if somebody wrote in their essay, the stupid people of medieval Europe were simply childish to believe that the Black Death was caused by a cruel god. It is clear that the writer is using subjective language to show that they are judging the people in the past. This is clear by the use of the adjectives stupid, childish to believe, and cruel. Instead of this, when showing historical empathy, you could simply say that the people of medieval Europe believed the Black Death was caused by God. It's important to see that you're still saying the same thing, but you don't need the adjectives which betray your own personal judgments. Now that you know what historical empathy is and how to demonstrate it in your own work, I hope that you're feeling more confident. If you need more examples, explanations and advice, please visit the History Skills website, and I'll see you next time.